So this list is, is just about impossible to make, honestly. Hey friends, Ash here with Gent Sense. Hope that you're doing well. I said that weird, Gent Sense. Today I'm gonna be talking to you guys about my 10 favorite designer fragrances ever, ever. Yeah, that's a long time. Got some rules though. No discontinued fragrances that are impossible to find. So Gucci and V won't be on this list, even though realistically it would be one of my top 10. Reason for that is anytime I include fragrances that are pretty much impossible to find, people will complain. Hey man, why'd you include that? <laughs> it's hard to find, dude. Sorry, I just won't do it ever, I guess. So yeah, that's about the only rule. Let's jump into it and check these out. Now there is a program you can use called Frag Ranker. Frag Ranker. Uh, if I can remember, I'll put a link in the description. Maybe you could Google it. Use, use the old Google, pull it up that way. It's this program that you can use. It's like command prompt text-based basically. And uh, you have to put in each fragrance that you own in your collection into uh, like a notepad. You basically run through this program and it keeps pitting fragrances up against each other. And then at the end of it all, it tells you these are your top 10 favorites basically. But guess what? I'm not gonna sit there and, and type in all these fragrances, I'm sorry, it would take too long. Originally, I was gonna do that, and then I decided, no. So this is just kind of what popped into my mind first. That's how I came up with it, all right. This is not in any particular order, so we're not going 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Just all of these are my favorites. Let's kick it off, Dior Homme Intense, Surprise of the Century. Who, who could have seen this coming? Not me. Iris, Lavender, Pear, Ambrette, and Cedar. Some of the notes here, this one gives me a, a nose gasm, a brain gasm every time I smell it. Absolutely adore this stuff. I've got new bottles, I've got old bottles, I've got kind of old bottles. I got a lot of bottles of Dior Homme Intense. That sweet, creamy Iris that's in here is just exquisite. It smells fantastic, the Ambrette kind of weaving throughout that little bit of woodiness that you get that touch of fruitiness from pear your almond tense is an amazing fragrance easily one of my top 10 favorite designers this is actually the first one that popped into my head so that's why I'm now also i'm just going to get this out of the way as well i want to mention valentino Womo intense and gentleman eau de parfum now i'm not including them in the official 10 here uh, and that's because if i did it would be very iris heavy and iris being used in a somewhat similar way to Dior Homme Intense. So Valentino Homme Intense, I love that one. And Gentleman Eau de Parfum, I love as well. Wanted to make sure to, to say that, even though it's not in the official list. Next up, Aqua de Jo Profundo. And I guess also the original Aqua de Jo. You know, you could kind of make this a two for one deal, Aqua de Jo Profundo and the OG. I've talked about this before, but the original Aqua de Jo, that was my signature scent for years. And Aqua de Jo Profundo kind of reinvented that DNA for me a little bit, that Aqua de Jo DNA modernized it and made me excited to wear a fragrance that smelled very similar to what I rocked so many years ago, once again. It's got sea notes, citrus, rosemary, cypress, and mineral notes in here as well. So it's Aqua de Joe modernized with a bit of a green tinge, a green twist, but I absolutely adore this stuff. You can wear anywhere, anytime, people are gonna love it. And my love for Aqua de Joe continues, you know, uh, over a decade later. And uh, this is the one I'm reaching for now more often from the line, so that's the one I'm gonna feature. Let's go from one blue fragrance, well, kind of blue, to another. Blue de Chanel. Now this is the Eau de Toilette. I also really like the Eau de Parfum, but the Eau de Toilette is the first one that I bought. And this one for a long time was one of my ride or die fragrances just because of that versatility. People love the Blue de Chanel. They love the way it smells. It's so easy to wear. It's a big compliment of polar. You know all that stuff. It's so boring hearing it so many times that you almost fall asleep. And yet it's still true. Blue de Chanel, as far as blue fragrances go, is probably the classiest of the bunch. It's that one that smells the most sophisticated, like it has its stuff together a little bit more. Maybe it's not the loudest of the bunch, maybe not the sweetest of the bunch, maybe it doesn't command attention as much as some other big heavy hitter blue fragrances do, but it's a, a great jack of all trades fragrance. All right, next fragrance is technically from Guerlain, and I know some people are gonna be like, bruh, 
Guerlain is a niche perfume house. Thank you for that bit of information, perfume bro. But um, Guerlain has a lot of fragrances. You know this, I know this, that are very inexpensive, that fit much better into a designer list than a niche list, which is why I'm putting it in this one. It's just good old fashioned vetiver. It's got citrus, tobacco, pepper, oak moss, and um, also vetiver <laughs> in the note breakdown. This one maybe won't appeal as much to younger guys out there because it doesn't have a you know good amount of sweetness in there. Definitely comes across with a more mature vibe to it. It's a great fragrance for office situations, formal situations, or really frankly casual ones as well. You can rock this in winter and spring and fall. Summertime maybe I'd go with something else, but this one uh, keeping kind of uh, in the same path as Blue de Chanel and Aqua de Jo Profundo is really versatile, just in a different way. The cost on this is next to nothing. Yeah, I mean, it really, for the quality of this stuff at discounters, it's super cheap. I love Guerlain Vetiver. If you like Vetiver based scents, gotta check it out. Now we're going with another Armani, and it's uh, Code Absolute. Yeah. Code Absolute. I, I didn't think I would like it as much as I did when it came out, and yet it exceeded everything I thought it could possibly be. Vanilla, Tonka, Suede, Nutmeg, and Apple. It's got this effervescence, this sweetness, this sparkle that has spices intermingled throughout. It smells amazing. It's like Code Profumo or Code Ultimate, slightly reimagined and tweaked. It retains that compliment factor, which is so important to so many people with that sweetness, that warmth. Only here, it's a little bit smoother, a little bit more refined but it has that playful edge that the earlier fragrances did as well. Code Absolute, love this stuff. If they discontinued that, I would probably buy like two or three bottles. Next up, Wanted by Night. Yeah, from Azaro, this thing just kept on growing on me like a, like a fungus. Yeah, like a fungus that smells really heckin' good. This one has tobacco, fruity notes, including orange, vanilla, and uh, cinnamon as some of the notes in the fragrance. And uh, I just love this thing, especially for the price point. You know, just throw that out there again. Like I always have to at discounters, this thing $40 and under. Every time I think of how much I've worn this and how well it comes across, the attention that it commands, how much confidence it gives me. And then the fact that it costs under 220s, I'll take it every day. Now, another fragrance that is not very expensive, only this one not very expensive at retail. It's Eau de Beau from Luxaton. Vanilla, Tonka, Cypress, and Cardamom, some of the notes in the fragrance here. This one is gonna be for lovers of kind of a smoky vanilla, this kind of slightly charred vanilla with uh, fantastic woodsy nuances and, and green specks kind of flecked throughout the scent. Got additional warmth and sweetness from the Tonka as well, melds together with the vanilla pretty much right away. That is a killer killer scent that gets overlooked all the time. I mean, it was hyped a lot back in the day, but not so much anymore. And again, for the price at retail, I think it's under $70. It is a steal. Under a dollar per milliliter, full retail. So if you have a L'Occitane nearby, uh, I know they're in a lot of malls and stuff like that. Go ahead, go in there and check that fragrance out and actually just check out all the fragrances that they have from in there. Because a lot of them are really good. Next up on the list, just a big old honking bottle, just a, a destroyer, a Thanos size bottle. Terre d'Hermes from Hermes. And this is the Eau de Toilette, just the, the original, the OG. Orange, pepper, vetiver, and cedar. Some of the notes in the scent. I like Guerlain Vetiver. This one, really classy, sophisticated, a little bit mature, you could say, and has a heavy focus on vetiver, which again, love of mine. So this one is a little bit divisive because it has this, this flint kind of note, this earthiness to the fragrance that can turn some people off. You know, they smell it and they, they don't really like that orange mixing with that, that earthiness and that vetiver, and uh, it can just kind of turn them away. But for me, it's, it's always kind of drug me in, you know, kicking and screaming. And the more I wore it, the more I was just entranced by it. It's it's a killer fragrance, which is why I have this monstrously huge, stupid looking bottle. Next up is uh, a fragrance that used to be cheap. Used to be able to pick this up for very little. Now it seems to just be available at retail. That being said, I think it's worth full retail. So, you know, it, it's just one of those things when you could get it when the getting was good. All right. But even now it's still still worth it. Womo Signature from Ferragamo. Tonka, leather, coffee, cinnamon, and cardamom, some of the notes in this fragrance. 
really warm, really sweet, like quite sweet, a bit leathery, and then very spicy. And of course, coffee good amount of coffee. Now, whereas in the original Womo, it came across like tiramisu, so a sweetened coffee dessert kind of note, here it's it's basically roast coffee beans. Womo Signature has been one of those fragrances that I love it, but I really just pull it out in winter time. And it seems like every winter, you know, when it comes around and I haven't sprayed that on for nine months or whatever, I bust it out, I give it a spray and I just get surprised again about how much I like it. And sometimes yeah, that does happen. <laughs> you'll forget how much you like it. You'll see the fragrance and you'll remember, I know I like that. I know that's pretty good, but you know, it's 95 degrees outside. I'm not gonna wear it today. And then when the time comes, give it that spray and man, your eyes just bug out of your head. Now, before I get to the last fragrance, I wanna very quickly mention just a few more that I feel like I need to bring up just really quickly. Uh, first up, Mercedes-Benz Club Black. This one is one of the best vanilla fragrances on the market as far as designer scents go right now. This one is a fantastic alternative to fragrances like Guerlain's Spiritu Stuble Vigny. As far as the price goes, <laughs> about as good as you can get to get an alternative to that one. And then uh, it's also a little bit similar to Perry Ellis Black Vanilla Oud Absolute, which my wife absolutely adored and that used to be a great buy which is now impossible to find also uh, miyake pulse of the night oh, man that is a fragrance i absolutely cannot get enough of and it's very very hard to find and then the scent private accord hugo boss i, I really enjoy that fragrance the melding of coffee and cacao and maninka i think it's fantastically done and uh, that one just barely missed out so i wanted to bring that up all right last but not least pure havan by mugler and this might be like the last time i can kind of mention this in one of these lists because you know i say uh, no discontinued, no crazy, crazy hard to find. This one's getting getting difficult to get your hands on. It's a, it's a bad thing. It's not good. I think it's at Fragrance X for 130 some odd dollars. That's, that's bad, man. It feels bad. There was a time uh, not that long ago. Uh, you could find its discounters around 60, 65. And I remember at the time, you know, you would think, wow, it's discounted, but not that much. It's still kind of expensive, almost 70 bucks. Dang. Now it's about twice that much and it's, it's for sale almost nowhere. Unfortunately, we may be coming to the end of the era of uh, Pure Havan. So anyway, this one has fresh tobacco leaves. It has honey, it's got vanilla, it has patchouli. This is one of my favorite sweet pipe tobacco fragrances ever. Talking niche and designer and indie. I love this. It's gotten me crazy compliments over the years. It's, it's just been there for me during a, a lot of important times in my life. I, I rocked the heck out of it. I wore it to the office constantly. I love Pure Havan. So it really sucks to see that one kind of on its last legs. You know, it's like you're going into the hospital saying your goodbyes. Bye Pure Havan. I'll never forget the times we had. And yeah, that one, Pure Havan, gonna wrap up this list. My 10 favorite designers of all time. Until tomorrow when I go like, oh wait, I like that one more than that one. Dang it. Uh, you know how it is. All right, guys, hit me in the comments below with some of your favorite designers ever. Just let me know. Thanks for hanging with me. Thanks for your support. Stay safe out there and I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.